everyone, welcome back to BCC Kids. It's great to have you here with us. My name is Ellie and today we're gonna kickstart our Sunday service with Guess Our Story. So let's see if you can guess it. So today you've got to find these three items, all to do with our story. So let's see if you can find a coat, the most colorful item you have in your house and some coins. have my coat. Let's see if I'll put that on. I've got my coat and the most colourful item I have in my house are these socks for some reason <laughs> and I've got some coins. So I wonder if you can guess our story today from this coat, this super colourful item and these coins. <laughs> I wonder if you guessed it. Today's story is Joseph the Dreamer. So here's our story. Joseph the Dreamer. This story comes from Genesis chapter 37. When Jacob's son Joseph was 17 years old, he helped out his brother in herding the animals and flocks. Jacob loved Joseph more than any of his other sons, and he made him a very fancy coat. When his brothers realised that his father loved him more than them, they grew to hate Joseph. They wouldn't even speak to him. Joseph had a dream. When he told it to his brothers, they hated him even more. He said, listen to this dream I had. We were all in the field gathering bundles of wheat. All of a sudden, my bundle stood straight up and your bundles circled around it and bowed down to me. His brother said, so you're going to rule us? You're going to be the boss of us? And they hated him even more because of his dreams. They wouldn't speak to him. He had another dream and told this one also to his brothers. He said, I dreamed another dream. The sun and moon and 11 stars bowed down to me. When he told it to his fathers and brothers, his father scolded him. What's with all this dreaming? Am I and your mother and your brothers all supposed to bow down to you? Now, his brothers were really jealous and his father wondered himself about the whole business. Joseph's brothers had gone off to a town where they were pasturing their father's flock. Jacob said to Joseph, your brothers are with the flock in a nearby town. Come, I want to send you to them. Joseph said, I'm ready. Jacob said, go and see your brothers and the flock and how they are doing and bring a report back. Then he sent him off on his way. The brothers spotted him off in the nearby distance. By the time he had got to them, they had cooked up a plot to kill him. The brothers were saying, here comes the dreamer. Let's kill him and throw him into one of these old wells. We can say that a vicious animal ate him. We'll see what his dreams amount to then. Reuben, the oldest brother, heard the others talking and stepped in to save Joseph. We're not going to kill him, no. Go ahead and throw him in the well, out here in the wild, but don't hurt him. Reuben planned to go back later and get him out and take him back to his father. When Joseph reached his brothers, they ripped off the fancy coat he was wearing, grabbed him and threw him into the well. There wasn't any water in the well. Looking up, they saw a caravan of traders on their way, their camels loaded with spices, ointments and perfumes to sell in Egypt. Judah said, brothers, what are we going to get out of killing our brother and concealing the evidence? Let's sell him to the traders, but let's not kill him. He is after all our brother, our flesh and blood. His brothers agreed. 
his brothers pulled Joseph out of the well and sold him for 20 pieces of silver to the traders who took Joseph with them down to Egypt. Later, Reuben came back and went to the well. The brothers took Joseph's coat, killed a goat and dipped the coat in a little bit of blood. They took the fancy coat to their father and said, we found this, look, look it over. Do you think this is your son's coat? Jacob recognized it at once. My son's coat, a wild animal has eaten him. My Joseph, torn limb from limb. In Egypt, the traders sold Joseph to one of Pharaoh's officials. This person was the manager of their household. So that's part one of our story today. We'll finish off part two next Sunday because it's quite a big chunk of a story. So now it's time for Why Why What? So why do I like this story? Well, I like it because Joseph was a dreamer. God spoke to Joseph through dreams of what was gonna happen in the future. That's pretty cool. And Joseph had the skill to interpret those dreams. So he was able to understand what the dreams meant, even if they were super, super weird. Do you get weird dreams? I get weird dreams. In our house, when we have a weird dream, we like to talk about it the next day. And sometimes they're really funny. Sometimes they're really strange. And sometimes they make no sense at all. My dreams are sometimes, my dreams can be really strange. It's sometimes because I'm worried about something. And when these dreams happen, it reminds me that I need to talk to God about this. Sometimes you just forget, don't you? So when I have a weird dream, it reminds me to go to God and talk to him about it. Why is this story important? Well, this story shows that no matter how old you are, no matter where you are in life, no matter what you're doing, God can use you. Because Joseph was only 17. That's pretty young. And he was put, and he was thrown down a well and his brothers didn't like him but God was still using him for something bigger because remember, his dreams were from God. So we'll see what happens next week in part two as well of what will happen. But no matter where you are, what you're doing, how old you are, God can still use you. So what has this got to do with me? So even though Joseph went through lots of bad situations, God was still using him. And there is lots to be thankful for, even when we're in bad situations. So, even though coronavirus is still lingering, we can still be thankful. So today, I am thankful that I get to see my family more in this season than I did when coronavirus wasn't around. That's a little bit strange, but I'm very thankful for that, and I'm going to try and enjoy that. So what are you thankful for today? And what can you be thankful for this week? So let's head to craft now, let's go. Hey everyone, welcome back to craft. And today we are making thankful hands. So what you're gonna need for this is you're gonna need some paper, scissors and coloring pens or pencils. And we're gonna start by grabbing your piece of paper and placing your hand on it and drawing around your hand. Now we're gonna cut this out.
once you've cut it out, you can now decorate this and write one or more things that you're thankful for today and this week. Here we go, here is mine. But I would love to see you send these into BCC Kids at bcc.life and we would love to see them and pop these up on our website. But I'll see you again next week for some more. Bye! So guys, let's all put our hands together, close our eyes and bow our heads while we pray, just to stop us from any other distractions. Lord, I thank you for this story on Joseph, Lord. I thank you that no matter how old we are, what we're doing or where we are, Lord, that you can still use us for anything. Lord, I pray that we will be thankful this week, Lord, that we will remember to thank you for all the little things in our lives, Lord. Lord, I thank you that I'm able to see my family lots more than I did when we weren't in this season. But Lord, I pray your protection over all of us this week. Amen. So I hope you enjoyed our session today on Joseph and learned a little bit. So I will see you next week for some more and don't forget to check out what's going on in the week. See you again, bye.